Okay, so it's my pleasure to talk about uh, the Wisconsin Manufacturer Report. So we could spin, please. Okay, so Wisconsin Manufacturer's Report, um, let's walk through that. So the host of the, the report is the Center for Manufacturing Productivity. But I'd like to certainly thank our sponsors, and let's, let's hit on that first. Um, all right, let's get to the sponsors of our top floor uh, marketing firm, First Business Bank, WMEP, and the Manufacturing Outreach Center from the northwestern portion of the state. So I want to talk about growth opportunities in, in manufacturing. That's really what the focus of the Wisconsin Manufacturing Report is. Um, when you come and actually see the report itself, the report out, and, and see the data, what you're going to see is three years worth of trends, which, which is very, very interesting. Uh, we're going to talk about four opportunities in great depth around growth. Um, we're going to have an appetizer today of what's coming up. And most importantly, it's coming up pretty quickly. It's October 2nd. And the, uh, the closest one here is in Brookfield. So when we get towards the my end of my slides coming up pretty quickly, you'll see a QR code. And I encourage all of you to scan it so you can see where, where it's going to be. So the first opportunity, what I'd like to touch on, is uh, from the perspective of there's really too much focus right now in manufacturing on cost reduction. And we all know we can't reduce ourselves to cost to success long term. That's not sustainable. 63% um, of the companies we talk to, again, we've got a pretty valid sample around the state, 63% focus primarily on cost reduction over innovation and growth. And also it's a little startling, 74% of manufacturers really do not prioritize, nor do they have a plan for growth. What's my strategy to get to where I want to go? Do I know where I want to go? And what's the strategy to get there? And without a strategy or roadmap, it's a little difficult to understand where we're going, right? So each of these four, I'm going to give you some, some high-level recommendations or some tidbits that will help. First is invest in innovation and growth. Give it, a fo you know, give it some focus. All of us get wrapped up working in the business, take some time to work on the business. We talk about that a fair amount. Um, hire curious employees, people that ask difficult questions, challenge assumptions, how we do things. And lastly, please develop and implement a strategic plan. Okay, that's what, again, it always is going to change once it meets reality, but you've thought it through, you know what your options are. So that's opportunity number one, which again, is try to have a balance between cost reduction, but focusing more on growth and innovation. So the second area, a topic we've talked a lot about, is workforce. And what we find here, you know, one of the opportunities is non-traditional approaches, innovation, right, for workforce really is being more successful. The companies out there that focus solely on, I'll call it the table stakes, they look at the, they look at the wages and they look at benefits. What we see is they're the ones that continue to have more problems getting and keeping people. Okay, what we see, the, the companies on the flip side that are innovative, look at non-traditional approaches, are more successful in getting and keeping employees. And you'll see up here a note here again, how do we build pride in where we work? So when we talk about some, again, some, some ideas of things that we can do, workforce culture, very important. Uh, I don't know about you, but I've seen many companies that hire 10 people, and then eight months later, eight of them are gone. Okay, that's difficult when you've got a leaky bucket, and it takes a lot of effort to do that. Secondly, again, employee, uh, uh, invest in employee development. And lastly, part of development is not only can people grow up with your organization, let them grow laterally. But most importantly, show them the path and show them that they're being considered and there's a plan for them. It's good. Again, that can be very pretty magical, again, how we both retain and engage employees. So the second area that comes out, there'll be a lot more detail in the report itself, comes back to the non-traditional approaches for workforce and recruiting. So the third area, and you've seen this spin through a, a fair number of the presentation topics, is around automation. Now you'll see the slide says productivity. I'm going to extend it and say automation itself is one of the best opportunities to help with our workforce. Why? Because we can create better paying jobs, jobs that people could grow into, be trained for, we could become more productive at the same time, and we can, often can, can reduce um, tasks that are, that are just fun, boring, or potentially even dangerous. 
So automation is very key. And you'll see that flavor coming up in the panel as well as some breakouts this afternoon. Smaller companies, we see a bigger struggle. We see it with technology and we see it from having a roadmap and the constraints that come with it. 64% um, of companies see automation as critical. 64%, that means a third don't, right? But a 64%, again, and you look at the, the recommendations that follow, it seems obvious, and, but it's, again, it's like Swiss cheese, take a little bite. Have a plan for, for automation, start with a little piece, get a win under your belt, and then do a little bit more. It's a journey, it's not a rush. And again, we see that the successful companies will do that. Uh, we see using external expertise, again, sometimes to bring an objective viewpoint to challenge what we do, where do we focus versus try to do it all. And lastly, again, explore some non-traditional funding sources. Uh, again, that'll help us on our journey. So the third, or the last area is cybersecurity. Anybody heard of this one before? I liken this to speeding on Route 41 going north. You always feel bad for that poor guy who's pulled over, never happened to me, right? Pulled over on Route 41 with red and light, uh, lights flashing behind him. It never is gonna happen to me, but when it happens to you, it hurts. And we see that with manufacturers. 22% uh, of manufacturers report being hacked in 2021. Is anyone here really willing to admit your credit card's been hacked, anybody? Or is it just me? Okay, I got some honest people out there. I bet there's more than that. So again, it's very common, 22%. Our focus group suggests that this issue's even bigger and getting bigger. And what you see here, again, the smallest companies are often the most vulnerable because we don't have the controls. We don't have the ability to put the multiple layers, perhaps, in place. But we do see, again, from the perspective of what we do about this, first of all, have a plan, do an assessment, understand where your gaps are, and implement that part of your plan to start to chip away at those. But most importantly, do a lot of training. It says it three times on the slide. What to look out for for employees, because again, we've all seen emails, we've all seen texts on our phones that we look at and go, I really don't know that guy that's, that's coming from South Africa offering me a million dollars. That just doesn't seem familiar. Or the UPS thing that we're supposed to pick up tonight that we have no idea where it came from. So again, train, 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 a key element. So again, from a Wisconsin manufacturing report perspective, again, there's a full report coming out. There's a URL for it. This is where you'll pull your phones out, please. So you could, you could, you could put this on your phone and hopefully uh, bookmark it. Uh, you, what you'll see there when you go there, you'll have all three events, uh, the dates, times. You'll see where to get the report when it comes out. In October, by the way, tomorrow's October, so it's coming up really fast. Uh, and the first session is coming up here, actually in Brookfield. And again, um, you should hopefully be looking for it. It's a great voice of the customer in manufacturing in Wisconsin. And again, we've got three years worth of data now, so we start to see some very interesting trends. So with that, I promised I'd stay on track, so we're less than a minute to go. I, again, I promised I'd, Dan, I'd give you a teaser of the Wisconsin Manufacturing Report. Um, and I encourage you all to spend some time, either get to a session, or certainly go to the report itself. So thank you very much. Thank you, Dan.